Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a very cool anti-meta pick that helped me go 10-5 and 5 and climb back to Legend rank, and that is Shadow Gyarados. Shadow Gyarados is an absolute menace in this format. The Dragon Breath damage is incredibly oppressive, and it does enough damage that it actually defeats Registeel in the two shield. The team I ran, honestly, if I ran it again, I would switch up the lead, as the entire team was a bit too weak to Lantern, but outside of that, Shadow Gyarados put in a ton of work. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches and check out Shadow Gyarados in the Fossil Cup. Hopping into the first match, picking up a terrible lead, Registeel into Swampert. I safe switch into the Shadow Gyarados, and the opponent sends in Registeel. Registeel, of course, has access to Zap Cannon, which hits for double super effective damage. But guess what? Shadow Gyarados does not care, because Shadow Gyarados can win the two shield here. They go for the Zap Cannon, they get the debuff, but watch this. It's not going to matter. Shadow Gyarados already has the Registeel below half health. Ready Steel, recognizing that things are starting to look dire, and they're going to commit the shield. I'm firing off Aqua Tail number two. Opponent is double shielding. They really want to try and keep switch advantage as they had very favorable alignment, but that's not gonna happen as Shadow Gyarados will make it to Aqua Tail number four. That's gonna be KOing Ready Steel, and just like that, Shadow Gyarados has one switch. In the back, they have Quillfish. Quillfish farming up will be hit with a crunch. This is debuff, but this is still going to deal so much damage. We're going to switch into the Registeel, adding insult to injury as we catch the Sludge Wave. And this game is so over. Back in comes the Swampert. Swampert still hoping that whatever my final Pokemon is, Swampert's going to have a good matchup against. But I have very bad news. It's Pelipper. The Swampert is fully walled. Opponent is going to stay in this matchup long enough to go for the Bad Manners Earthquake. And they concede the match. The tough leads continue in the next match. Registeel into Shadow Mawile. Mawile does typically run Fire Fang in this cup, so I need to switch out into the Shadow Gyarados. My opponent is going to respond with Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn, they can go straight Power Whip in this matchup just due to how glassy Shadow Gyarados is. I'm going to shield up, throw two Dragon Breaths, and then go for the Crunch. Crunch will do a lot of damage if it lands, which it does, and we get the defense drop as well. That is absolutely terrific. With the defense drop, I can Dragon Breath down in the two shield and take switch advantage. And that's going to be quite nice because that means I get to put the Pelipper on the Mawile in the end game. Shadow Gyarados, again, just so oppressive with the damage, gets the farm down. Back in comes the Mawile. Mawile trying to farm down with the Fire Fangs. I fire off the Aqua Tail. That does so much damage to the Mawile, and I'm going for Aqua Tail number two. Opponent is going to have to shield here, as the Aqua Tail would be lethal. They get the farm down, and now I send in the Pelipper. I try and go for the catch, but my opponent not going to let that happen. They go for the play rough. We'll have to see what that final Pokemon is. I go for the Weather Ball, and they make a catch. They end up catching the Weather Ball onto Kartana. I can now send in the Registeel. Registeel, very quick. The charge moves, able to outpace the Kartana, and that is very important. As if I took a Night Slash, I would potentially be in a range where Mawile could throw power-up punches and farm down. Whereas now, I'm just too healthy. They go for the power-up punch. They're going to realize here that they just cannot do enough damage. And they concede the match. We see our first positive lead in the next match. Registeel into Jellicent. Incredibly nice matchup. Opponent save switches into Lucario. And I'm going to respond with Pelipper. Now, Lucario can typically force a shield in this matchup. I'm going to shield once and then just look to massively over farm with the Pelipper. Because the nice thing is I can exit this matchup with a ton of energy and use it to potentially threaten the Jellicent. Weather Ball is going to KO. In comes the Jellicent and I am firing off the Hurricane. Hurricane definitely going to hurt. That does a lot of damage to the Jellicent. I continue to farm up with the Pelipper. I'm not quite able to make it to the Hurricane, but at this point, this Weather Ball, after it lands, I'm going to be able to put them into Dragon Breath farm down range with the Gyarados. So now, they're going to fire off the Shadow Ball. I can just send in the Gyarados. In the back, they have Registeel. Now, Shadow Gyarados wins the twos here, but I only have one shield. So that does complicate the math here a little bit. It looks like I'm going to need a catch. I'm going to be shielding because, of course, Zap Cannon would kill probably every Gyarados alive with how much damage it does. And I'm going to look to farm up. And here, I'm going to try and go for a catch. The nice thing is, even if I fail a catch, a Focus Blast will not one-shot my Reggie. 
I farm up here, switch, and we do get the catch onto the Registeel. Let's go. So Zap Cannon is going to get the debuff, but the debuff honestly doesn't really matter here. I make it to the Focus Blast. Focus Blast will be lethal. My opponent is going to commit the shield. They need a very precise undercharge Zap Cannon lock-on farm down to win this game. They go for the undercharge. That is a bit too much of an undercharge. They go for the catch onto the Jellicent. I let myself get farmed down so I can farm down with the Gyarados and leave with the Aqua Tail to KO the Registeel. Precision in that end game as we secure the win. Hopping into the next match, hitting Registeel into Lantern. If you see a Lantern with this team, you absolutely want to catch it on the lead. As I mentioned, if I ran this team again, I really like the back line, but I'd probably run a different lead that is stronger to Lantern. Specifically, because my back Pokemon have zero play against Lantern whatsoever. And Ready Steel, it's a pretty neutral matchup versus Lantern across the board. And ideally, if your back line is that weak to Lantern, you'd want something up front that is a bit stronger. Now, I did get the attack debuff, which is quite nice, so I can tank this Thunderbolt very comfortably, make it to another Zap Cannon. This, of course, not going to KO, but it will put them below half health. I get a second debuff, which is quite nice. They're going to look to massively over farm, and from here, I'm just going to let this go. They're double debuffed. I'm just going to send in the Shadow Gyarados, look for the farm down. Opponent sends in Galizapod. I farm up with the Gyarados switch, and we get the catch onto Pelipper. I got some very nice Dragon Breath damage, got energy onto the Gyarados, and now I can commit to the full wing attack farm down here with the Pelipper. My goal is I want to leave with energy because the Lantern took quite a bit of damage, so the Lantern is definitely not going to appreciate all these stacked up Weather Balls. Opponent doesn't send in the Lantern, they send in their final Pokemon, they have a Scavalier, but it's stuck going up against two Flying types. I'm looking to massively over farm with the Pelipper and fire off the Weather Ball. Weather Ball from the Pelipper is going to KO. They can send back in the Lantern, but I'm going to bring in the Shadow Gyarados. And at this point, the opponent has an Electric type against two Water Flying types, but I just have too much energy stored here. I bait with the Aqua Tail, and the opponent concedes the match. We see a bit of a tricky lead in the next match. Ready Steel into Shadow Alolan Sand Slash. This is a bit of a core breaker for the team. I'm going to stay in, farm up until one Shadow Claw past their drill run, and then make the catch onto Shadow Gyarados. My opponent is now going to send in Pelipper. Pelipper goes for the Weather Ball. This is resisted, but Shadow Gyarados is incredibly frail. Weather Ball does a lot of damage, but I'm going to be able to make it to the Crunch, and Crunch should be lethal from this range. Crunch KOs the Pelipper, and I'm able to win Switch. The nice thing is I was able to waste a lot of energy from that Sand Slash, so I can bring in the Ready Steel here, and I'm at an energy advantage. I'm going to bait with the Zap Cannon because I'm fully expecting them to shield. Zap Cannon does get shielded. I'm going to look for the catch again. I do not get the catch, but it looks like the opponent's weak, and they concede the match. Great lead in the next match, Ready Steel into Araquanid. Opponent save switches into a Water Gun Lantern, and I am incredibly happy to see Lantern here, considering I have the two Water Flying types in the back. I go for the Zap Cannon onto the Lantern, and I get an immediate attack drop, which is very nice for me. While they are running Water Gun, which of course means they don't have the double super effective fast move pressure, I'm still going to stay in here with the Ready Steel, because once I get the Electro type out of the way, then my Water Flyer should pretty much be good against everything in the meta. I go for the Zap Cannon, I get a shield and a second debuff, that is so nice for me. Opponent goes for a Surf, that will not KO. I make it to the Focus Blast, but unfortunately I end up losing CMP. I'm gonna let this go, they're debuffed, and I'm just gonna go for big energy on the Shadow Gyarados. My opponent will make the last second Thunderbolt, it's double debuff, but it's double super effective. I am absolutely shielding and getting the farm down. I have quite a lot of energy here, we'll have to see what my opponent decides to send in. They're thinking about it, they send in the bulky Araquanid. I'm farming up and firing off the Crunch. Crunch is going to hurt. Crunch does a lot of damage here. That connects. We get the defense drop, and I'm going for Crunch number two. This is going to come very close to KOing. Crunch connects. Araquanid with one HP, able to hang on and make the bubble beam. That's absolutely awful. In the back, they have an XL Chinchou. You've got to be kidding me. Oh my goodness, I get rid of the Lantern, I'm so confident I'm going to win, and the opponent empties the Spice Rack, bringing an XL Chinchou, and I just lose. There's nothing I can do here. They make another Thunderbolt, that's going to KO the Pelipper, 
And yeah, I don't know what else to say except congratulations. Well done. <laughs> We've got the Battle of Steel types in the next game, Ready Steel versus Berserker. The nice thing about being the Ready Steel in this matchup is you can tank a close combat, whereas they cannot tank a Focus Blast. Here, I was farming up. I wanted to throw on 17 lock-ons. Unfortunately, the game was stuttering a lot, so I end up accidentally throwing on alignment and giving them an entire Shadow Claw for free, which is definitely not great. I'm gonna let this through as I do survive. They bait with a foul play. I save switch into the Shadow Gyarados. I farm up a ton of energy. They go for a catch onto Jellicent, and that is not going to happen. Shadow Gyarados making it to the Crunch. Crunch deals massive damage to the Jellicent, and Jellicent is going to fire off the charge move here. They go for the Shadow Ball. I'm gonna shield and get the farm down, and I leave with energy to threaten the Berserker opponent. They're gonna wait their clock here as they're still locked, and it turns out Berserker wins CMP over Gyarados. A bit unfortunate for me, but I have energy, and I wanna get shields down. If I can get shields down, it's way easier to get rid of the Berserker. Switch timer's up, so I'm gonna send in Pelipper. Pelipper going for the Weather Ball, and this time the opponent does get their catch. Very unfortunate for me, but the good news is, is I should be able to make it to the Hurricane here. Hurricane will be easily enough to KO the opponent's Pelipper, and I'm still not in a health range where a foul play would KO. In comes the Berserker, they're firing off the Foul Play, but as you're gonna see, it's just not enough damage. Foul Play does not get same type attack bonus, and the Pelipper able to make it to the Weather Ball. Weather Ball KOs the Berserker, and that's a good game. We see a loss lead in the next match, Registeel into a Scavalier. Same game plan as always, save switch into the Shadow Gyarados, opponent sends in Lantern, and this is tough. As I mentioned at the beginning, this team is extremely weak to Lantern. If you see a backline Lantern, honestly, it's very difficult to overcome because they can fully spark all the way down and they're left in a health range where you can't really lock on down. So if I ran this team again in the future, I'm not quite sure what lead I would use, but I would probably opt for something that is a bit stronger into the Lantern because as you're gonna see, Lantern is going to be able to deal so much damage to my Registeel and now, I basically just need Pelipper to 1v2 in the back. I am firing off the Focus Blast here. Focus Blast is, of course, going to be lethal. And then, I just have to trust in Pelipper. It's a Galissapod! Wait, this might actually be winnable. But, as you're gonna see, I make a textbook mistake. I shield the first Liquidation. It debuffs. And despite the fact that I baited out the Lantern, and they are now ABA weak to Pelipper, by me, unfortunately, having a pretty bad shield, I've now lost this game. Because they go for the X Scissor here, and now I make it to the double Weather Balls. But as you're going to see, they have the charge move loaded, and Pelipper does not win CMP. If I won CMP there, we may have had a chance, but we do not. The X Scissor is going to land, and unfortunately for our good friend Pelipper, it's just run out of HP as a Scavalier will fully counter down. We see a familiar lead in the next match, Ready Steel in Jellicent. This is incredibly nice as both Ready Steel and the Shadow Gyarados do very well here. My opponent is gonna send in Lucario. I get a pretty fast switch in, so I'm able to make it to the Weather Ball before they make their Shadow Ball. Opponent shields, which is honestly pretty unusual in this matchup since they're shielding, that almost clues me into the fact that they're trying to make a play for Switch and baiting by doing so. So I actually let that go. I'm able to successfully call the bait and I get both shields. And at this point, I'm just not shielding. I don't need Switch advantage. They're actually running Power Up Punch Close Combat. That's an incredibly cool moveset. But now I can send in the Shadow Gyarados, farm down. And basically, unless they have a Lantern in the back, Shadow Gyarados up two shields beats everything. They're going to be firing off a charge move here, but it's not going to matter. I have two shields to hide behind. They only go for the Surf, but I'm already taking enough damage that I should probably be shielding everything here. I go for the Crunch. That fully KOs in the back. It's a Mawile, and the opponent concedes the match. Hopping into the final match, and we've got the Mirror Lead, Registeel versus Registeel. I'm going to stay in this matchup to start, trade Focus Blast, and then once I've landed a Focus Blast, I'm going to save switch into the Shadow Gyarados. Because the nice thing is, if they throw their Focus Blast right away, it takes them 16 turns to get to the Zap Cannon, and I'm able to make it to my Aqua Tail in 12. So, I'm never going to have to take a Zap Cannon here. My opponent is going to send in a Jellicent, and Jellicent is going to have a terrible day with this Shadow Crunch. 
I fire off the crunch. That does massive damage. Opponent overtaps. They don't get their Shadow Ball. And they concede the match. All in all, I think Shadow Gyarados is a really nice pick that you can use, especially if you're looking to make a climb in terms of ELO. With regards to the team around it, I do think there's probably a better team for it than this particular team. I really like it as a safe switch, as basically against anything that's not a lantern, it has the ability to two shield and make a play for switch advantage. So if you're looking to test it out, I definitely recommend using Shadow Gyarados. I just might recommend putting it with two different teammates. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support you guys provide is absolutely incredible. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.